Hello, my name is Passy or William. I'm the founder of the Academy of Robotics. We're here in the London borough of Hounslow today and we're very excited to have you here. So, we're here to talk about three things today. The first is why we're even here and why we exist as a company. The next thing is we're going to give a spectacular demo and then show you what we've been working on for the last two to three years. And then lastly, we'll be joined by a panel of experts who are going to discuss the modern miracle we're hoping to show you here later. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the last mile problem. So we've all bought something online. Now what many people don't know is one of the biggest problems in all of online retail is simply this, the cost of getting a package to you. Now you could buy something online and have it shipped to your house for next to nothing when it gets to your local depot. But from that local depot to your house, the cost goes up completely exponentially. They call this the last mile problem. So many companies have been trying to solve this problem. It's universally agreed that automating it is the right way to go. So you see the contenders, they are companies making these really cool knee-high robots. Personally, I love these, they're really great. But the problem is how do you scale this? How do you send these across a town? It becomes very expensive very quickly. I'll tell you a bit of a story. So six years ago, after I sold my last company, I went to study artificial intelligence and robotics. And one of the first things I did is I filed a patent on an invisible road network in the sky, which drones could use to navigate from point A to point B. The thing is though about drones is, I don't know if you can still hear anything I'm saying. They can be quite loud. They can be really annoying. So the problem with the drones is that they make for an absolutely terrible user experience. I then went to university and I started studying artificial intelligence and robotics. And it was from there I met most of my founding team and I started Academy of Robotics and then invented Cargo, the world's first last mile delivery vehicle. So the autonomous car space is very competitive. Over the last few years, some of the largest companies in the world have been working on ways to make cars drive themselves. Their focus, however, has been mainly on motorways and what we call A roads, the larger roads where there's a lot of traffic and you've got very clear delineated roads. We, however, all went to university in rural Wales where we had nothing but very small unmarked roads. You don't really know where the road starts, where it stops, sometimes the verge merges into it. So we focused on working on these smaller roads. We didn't have a billion dollars to hand to throw at new sensors like a lot of these companies did. So we did something very different. Now, I'm going to explain a bit of an interesting example in science. So a chimpanzee compared to a human, we know we have a bigger brain, we have better hardware. Our brain is essentially hardware. But yet, if you put a chimpanzee versus a human at intellectual tasks, when it comes to memory, chimps completely outperform us. And the question is, how is that? They have a smaller brain, we're smarter than them, but they're just better. The solution is better software. They run a better sort of system in their brain. So similarly, in our space, we thought rather than spend a billion dollars on better hardware, what if we put all our resources to innovating in just software? 
Cargo's vision system is based on evolution, very similar to how mammals' brains work. We started creating algorithms with memory, with new ways such as emergence and filed over 14 patents just in software alone on different ways in which we can make cars drive themselves better autonomously. The results is something very cool, would very much like to show you right now. When I first started working with AI, I remember AI just being a distant futuristic concept. Our research at the time, me and Dr. Tucci's, was to understand self-driving cars in unmarked roads, environments that were not necessarily structured. We focused a lot from the very start to understand really how representations of pixels affect the performance of AI and other computer vision systems in general. We have uh, our own patented vision system, Biosim, which could actually change the field of AI because it uses techniques that uh, very few players, if any, use in real world cases. I realized this wasn't just another AI self-driving car. They'd solve things in a smart way. They hadn't followed the crowd. That's what gives Cargo its big differentiator in the marketplace. The cargo software has been built with safety in mind, especially with, with aspects like the, our own hybrid color model uh, and the sort of algorithms we apply, is basically designed for unmarked roads and complex urban environments. So Eurovia are a fascinating partner for us. We didn't realize that a company which traditionally works with roads has a use for artificial intelligence the way that we use artificial intelligence. One of the unique things that we identified was their use of computer vision and navigation systems and how that could actually be helped and used to identify defects understand road condition better continuously as the vehicle is operating and using AI to then future predict the condition of the networks. Once uh, the, the iconic cargo car starts driving around in different parts of the country, I think people will start to recognize it more and more and I'm sure in the coming future it will become one of the leading brands of the country if not the world. So we've built cargo, we've built incredible software. The next step is getting it on the road. So I'm very, very proud to share with you all that cargo, our autonomous delivery vehicle, received its minister's approval certificate. This means that it is able to get a number plate and is now a street legal vehicle. The next phase is actually getting it on the road. Now, the current guideline in the UK goes as follows. To get a car on the road, it needs to be a street legal vehicle. A skilled operator must be able to take control at any time, be it in the vehicle or not in the vehicle, and it must be fully insured and a fully licensed vehicle. So we've ticked all these three boxes. However, we went a little bit further, and I'd like to show you something. Imagine there was a building that lets you interface with every single vehicle in Cargo's fleet with only the touch of a single button. Welcome to the Command Hub. The Command Hub system, a complete integrated vehicle monitoring system. You can access the cargo vehicle and see what's happening with its controller circuits. You can see examples from its vision output. You can even interface through our own in-house simulation platforms. These include the weather. These include what the car can see, what's happening around the car. The levels of detection that cargo can achieve for things that can't physically be seen even is quite impressive. Because we're making the vehicle itself and the software to control the vehicle, we can see what the car is doing. Is the indicator on? Is there a crack on the road? Is the road wet? Is there a puddle? And the car will tell you in real time all the things that are happening so we can log everything. We can take control if we need to. We can speak to the driver. Normally this will be buzzing with lots of people operating and managing the network on a day-to-day -day basis. Today is a great pleasure to be welcoming Academy of Robotics. So this is the building of absolute control.
One of the most important things is a lot of people talk about jobs or displacement caused by autonomy and things like driverless cars. We're one of the first companies hiring people or looking for people to join us to be able to help monitor or supervise fleets of autonomous vehicles. Here what we've put is a uh, simulator of a steering wheel and a uh, encoder sensor that we are we've custom built to measure the exact angle of the steering wheel. As we do robotics, we, you know, we have to be very accurate with what we do. So we have very high precision uh, measurements. So we're measuring down to about 0.0015 degrees. I, th I think the interesting thing about cargo is that the safety is, is almost above what is actually required legally at the moment. For example, yeah, there is a technology in there that can see a child before it runs out into the road through a car. Cars today don't have that, you and I don't have that. So it's actually going to be safer than a lot of the vehicles that are actually running and being controlled on the road today. Um, so the system that we've designed here uh, is the electronics that fit inside a cargo. And this is our interaction to all the sensors and actuators of the vehicle. Uh, so this controls the steering wheel, the angle of the steering wheel, the acceleration of the vehicle, uh, the indicators. You know, this is an exciting world, but we can't let the excitement overturn the rigor that has to be around safety. We do this to make sure that there's a driver in there uh, so that the car doesn't drive away without anybody in the vehicle. Um, because when we first roll out cargo, um, it's important that the car can't drive itself without someone sitting in the vehicle for safety reasons. We are now waiting for a human to press the green button. And now the AI has the ability to control the vehicle. The cornerstone, if you like, has to be the, the, the kind of rigor around safety and proving that you know, cargo is as safe as a human driver.